Okay, um, I'm going to be jumping into some layout stuff here. Um, and this is going to be about area text, which is a type of text or type that you can lay down. And uh, we, we talked about area text um, in the typography section. I'm going to take it further now for the purpose of um, layout uh, stuff. So um, I guess another thing I'll talk about is um, placing images and doing a mask again, which is also something I've covered in previous lessons. Um, but it'll be good to see it again, hopefully. Um, here I have a little magazine spread that I'm sort of uh, mocking up here uh, for a made-up magazine called uh, Canis Sparis, the fighting dog. Um, and uh, I've got my little buddy Miles here. He's a dog who belongs to uh, some friends of mine who got in a little scrap. He looks pretty rough. That cone looks rough, too. It's almost like the dog came back to get some more after they put on the collar. Um, it's just hilarious and sad at the same time. Anyways, uh, I kind of figured I'd make up an article about um, little dogs beating up big dogs, and I called it Beat Me Up, Scotty. And then the subtitle for this piece is What Happens When the Little Guy Beats Up the Big Guy. So as you can see, I've got a few like layout things set up here, and this is by no means awesome, but um, it's uh, it should give you an idea of like options and ideas. It should give you an idea of ideas, options, and um, you know different things that you could uh, do to sort of mock up your magazine. I've got the little color bar going across the top right page with the name of the magazine and the month and year that this was um, published. And, you know, I got the little uh, picture inset text down here, you know, poor miles and blah, blah, blah. That's just all, you know, Latin jargon. And there's a page number tucked down in the corner here. But things that are sort of relevant to the previous movie that I made for you guys, um, I, I've got my document all set up with my bleed, uh, on the outside, my gutter, safety margin on the inside, uh, the page fold, and all that, so that I know um, basically how this thing is going to lay out, but also I need to make sure that things like my picture, when I bring it in, go all the way out to my bleed margin. So this photo was sized um, appropriately in Photoshop, and um, and it's going all the way out to the bleeds. I'm not stretching it. This is something that came in naturally that way. Naturally. Um, so that is because if the knife comes by and cuts this image, it'll cut it in the middle of the picture instead of having a picture where it just sort of stops and then there's white. So you might have like a white edge on the top, right side or bottom, which is what um, you absolutely want to avoid as a designer, as a publisher, as a professional. Um, so this way when the knife cruises through it doesn't matter if it's off slightly because it still will cut on either side of the line and still include some of the photograph. I did the same thing over here with some supportive graphic. I've got this little sidebar with my title up on its end, but this graphic extends beyond the boundary of my magazine all the way to my bleed so that when the knife comes by and cuts right there it's not going to be bordered with white it'll just cut right through the middle of the brown um, and then for the safety margin on the inside this is just um, not only to protect important things like text and important graphics um, it's also kind of a nice balance for placement of things. So here I've got the safety margin gutter, and I'm using that as sort of a, a guide for where I can place my text. So it pretty much butts up right against that. The text on the, um, on the top here, the subtitle, also taking advantage of that margin. Looks like it could go a little bit to the left. About like that, center it in that white space. Um, and then it makes sure that things aren't going to be like 
you know, going into the middle of the fold of a, of a page where, you know, the magazine would be folded and you might not be able to read things. So that gives you a significant amount of space where important elements will not be hidden. Uh, and I use it up here for the Canis Barris April 2010 and then for the, the uh, page number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another picture. I'm going to place my Scotty Terrier. And this guy is going to sit over here on this side of the page. And, um, oh, look at that. So this is a picture I got of a Scotty Terrier. And then I put like a bear mouth or some, maybe it was a Wolverine. So I composited this crazy mouth on this little Scottish guy. And so that this is the dog who attacked Miles. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, I'm going to scale this down a little bit because it's a little big. I want it to be not so huge. Maybe something like that. And this is going to be in the middle of my article. So my article is going to be going along this page, you know, the, the, the base text, you know, where I'm talking about the story of these two. And then it might continue on to another page, since this page is pretty much all photograph. Um, now, what I would like to do with this Scotty image is I'd like to um, place the Scotty in like more of a circle instead of this rectangle that came natively with the photograph. So I'm going to um, I'm going to create a clipping mask for this guy, and um, I'm going to do that by putting in a circle. And I'm, I'm starting to stall because there's the two types of masks that you can put on an image and only one of them works with this area text that I'm about to go through. And there's a good chance that I might put the wrong one on, but that'll be fine. We're here to learn, right? That includes me. So I'm going to draw a nice, perfect circle. I'm using my shape tool, the ellipse. I'm holding down shift to make sure it's perfect. I'm also drawing from the center. So the two keys that I'm holding down right now are Option or Alt if you're on a PC and Shift. And that's allowing me to draw out from the center and it's keeping it constrained to a perfect circle. And then if I want to move it around with those two keys still compressed, I'm going to press the space bar and that allows me to move it temporarily without changing the scale. I'll put it something like that. And I would now like to create a clipping mask. That was so easy. I never showed you that way before, did I? I went the long way. Okay, so here's an image and a shape. If you select both of them and you go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, it's going to create a clipping mask for our little Scotty Terrier. Um, so that can be done with any shape that you make. Any, it doesn't even need to be filled. It could just be a path or a stroke. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my text. And the text, as far as area type goes, I'm going to take my text tool. And I'm going to use the edge of my graphic here and the edge of my gutter basically as my um, my margins because I'm going to show you a trick. Oh shoot, I clicked inside that one. Didn't want to do that. Right there. Ah, now this is the tough part working with graphics and text is that it thinks I want to go and put the text inside that shape, but um, let me about this go this way. You know, let me go this way. No, because you're going to think I want to go in there. I'm going to get frustrated with you. There we go. So I'm dragging a box. And the box is going to go all the way from the safety margin over to the graphic. And I'm going to extend it up a little closer to my headline. Now, where'd you go? 
there. And I'm just going to take that edge in so it's really close to that safety margin. Um, I am going to just, whoa, what did I just do? I hit F. So here's my text inside this guy. I'm going to align it to the right. And um, let's see here. I'm going to just type a few things in there just to kind of hold it on standby. All right, a few things I'm not happy with that I should set up right away before I go in and lay my text is that I need to change my font to something that's more legible. And in the print world, you notice that the type that you read in a article or um, you know either in a magazine or newspaper is, is usually a serif font which means that it um, isn't decorative at all it's it's um, very plain however it has serifs which are the little the little um, uh, like uh, what do you call them um, they're the little dangly extensions off of, I told you there's a word for them, but besides serif. Um, but uh, anyways, like a times. Uh, so times, there's all kinds of weird things going on with my text right now because of my headlines that I put in there. So I need 100% there, there. I want zero for my letting. I want automatic or for my letting, I want a zero for my tracking, and my size will probably be like a 12, okay, and then I do not want a stroke, I just want to fill, okay, that's better. So what I have done is I have copied and pasted some text from the internet, um, and I'm going to use that to paste into my body of text here. So I'll select all paste. Okay. So here's the article text. Laura Mipsor Delore, CMET's consecutor and distributed in elite and so on. Um, I can see that my article is here. However, there are some problems. Um, uh, as, a, as a design element, you know, it butts right up against my graphic. Not good. Um, it also goes right over this Scottish Terrier. Not good. So a few things I have to do. And so since this is area type, type in which I dragged a box to dedicate for the text, not something where I just clicked and started typing, I actually defined a box an area where my type was going to be. I have area type options and those are found under type and there it is right there, area type options. And so when you open up the area type options, the first thing you should do is hit preview so you can see what happens as you change this around. And we have, um, it defines your width, it defines your height and that's all basically from the box that you drew. So you don't have to worry about changing that. You could if you wanted to if you knew exactly the size that you needed it to be. The second thing it shows you is how many rows you have or how many columns. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into a double column setup here. So I'm going to increase my columns to two. And so now what that has done is it's gone in and it's, it's um, formatted my text to go down the first column and then go up and continue at the top of the second. And this is something which is way more pleasant on the eyes as, you, as a reader. And this is a very common practice for... Um, any sort of uh, layout where we break it down into columns and I could even go up to like three if I wanted to but that ends up being perhaps a little too narrow this is more like along the lines of what you might see in a newspaper and newspaper columns are usually too narrow for comfort um, you can only fit a few words in a column before you have to kick down a new line that's really not very good practice um, but here this feels better I don't have to like go all the way across a page, I can just kind of, you know, go down, and this is very common, we're all very used to this. What happens when you set up a two-column uh, thing of area type is that it gives you a gutter. So here I can see the gutter being uh, a quarter of an inch, and that's pretty standard. You could change it to be anything, you could change it to be 
um, you know, an eighth of an inch or more, but a quarter inch as far as text goes is pretty standard. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can go into an offset and deal with inset spacing. So right now I, you know, my, I define my box as going up along the edge of this graphic brown uh, rectangle and all the way up to my gutter here. But I could bring it in even more and that's going to feel even more balanced. So if I were to go increase my inset spacing, something like an eighth of an inch, now it has brought that text in from that edge. It's also brought it in from the gutter, which is going to feel a bit more balanced. So I could even go to a quarter if I wanted to, 0.25. But I think that ends up being too far away from the gutter. The gutter that I created originally was uh, kind of, you know, four things like text, whatever. Um, so uh, to me, that's too much. I'm just going to stick with like an eighth of an inch. And that's going to feel just dandy. So with those changes, I've I've made it so that it's it's not conflicting with the space um, of my uh, graphic on the side here. I think I can go ahead and move it up a bit there. I'm going to move it up, and I will bring it down. Such that should be a little bit better. Okay. Um, <clears throat> however, I still have this problem of the text going right over the the uh, the Scotty. So if I select the Scotty, and it's defined by this circle now. With that selected, if I go to Object, I'll see something called Text Wrap. And if I choose Make off of Text Wrap interesting. Why didn't this wrap? <laughs> it should have wrapped. Why didn't it wrap? Does it need to be in the foreground? Yes, okay. It needs to be on top of your text. Whew, that was an easy fix. It was underneath it. And if you look in my layers, the text is below Scotty. Scotty just needs to be up above it. You can just move it manually or you can use the arrange so what I did is I said uh, bring forward command right bracket. <clears throat> anyway, so now what I've done is I've gone into text wrap and said, yeah, make it. And it puts in by default an eighth inch sort of uh, barrier around the edge of this shape. And all of the text that used to go over it is now... Um, you know, hyphenated or whatever, it cuts off and kicks back down into the new next line and gives me this really kind of cool f wrap around this flow of text that does not interfere with my image and it becomes, you know, uh, almost a graphic element in itself to where it kind of has this carved away circle. It's a really nice treatment for um, putting in graphic shapes. So a circle, very easy. It could also be a rectangle, a square, it could be a star, it could be a paw print or something like that. Any shape, that any path that you have um, can become a text wrap. Just for example, if I were to go grab my pencil, make sure that fill was set in there, I might um, just take that color for a second and now I'm going to uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to do just sort of like a dog head. Oh, my curves and all that stuff set too high. Do, 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 do. All right. That was a good dog head, too. Dog head. Can I do it again? All right. So there's my dog head. This is just a shape that I drew with a pencil tool. I can also go to Object, Text Wrap, Make. And there you can see that the text just kind of makes sure that it finds its way around it. It gets a little too close to where the edges of my text were, so it can't really fit any words in there. If it were smaller, you know, then it wouldn't be a problem. So any form that's defined by a path can be... Um, used as a text wrap. 
and no matter where I put it, the text will just automatically adjust. So what's cool is it's not a permanent thing. It's kind of a live deal. I could even just like put it right there and it'll, it'll become part of the image. Cool, super cool. Delete it and it goes away. Um, so so the, the key elements there in area text is um, understanding uh, its uh, built-in settings, the, the columns, its own gutters, its inset um, uh, options, but then also how to, how to get um, it to wrap around graphic objects. Because I find that um, that opens up a lot of possibilities as far as a layout. Um, for your magazine or your brochure or whatever it is that you're making for somebody. It's a real, it's a real nice uh, treat. Um, you know, one thing I would have to do to make sure that I was being a good designer was try to make sure that this circle is centered within that text zone. I can tell right now that it's slightly to the uh, right. But if I did some measurements... I could figure out exactly where it needs to be to center it. And one of those one of those tricks could just be to take a rectangle and draw a rectangle that goes from the edge of my graphic to the edge of my gutter, something like that. I'll just fill it in for the time being so we can see it. So I know that this thing butts up against the edge of my brown and the edge of my gutter so that if I were to select my Scotty, and then that bar, and then click a second time on the bar. I have now designed that as my where are we here? My key object. So up in my control bar, it's set to align to key object. The key object being the the doubly selected rectangle. Now, if I center to it, it moves the circle shape right to the center of that. Now it's centered. I can just grab that guy and hit delete, and it goes away. So there's a little trick. Um, that's good to know. Uh, it's also just a reminder about precision and that as a designer, um, as an artist, that those little things make a huge difference. They help us stand out from the novices and the, all of the hacks that are out there trying to do what we do without really knowing what they're doing. Um, all right, so that's it for this video. We'll do a little bit of text again um, later. We'll also go over... Um, images and preparing them for prints and all that jazz uh, and uh, then more stuff it's all going to be coming it's going to be a snowball of videos this time